Okay, we're going to revisit number 19, the grocery bag problem. And this is a challenge problem. And I think when I did it with you, I was like, oh, this is just an F equals MA type of problem. I was really only halfway there when I did it. Um, what they want to know is, will the bag withstand, we know that it will withstand 15 kilograms of groceries. But if I'm holding it, that's one extreme. There's no additional forces other than the force of gravity pulling down the groceries inside the bag. And then the bag, uh, my hand, you know, applying an opposite force so that the bag doesn't drop. I'm holding the bag and the contents aren't, aren't falling. So the bag is in, and my hand are in equilibrium. The forces are in equilibrium, all right? So let me first represent that as a, as a free body diagram. So when you do that, you represent the object, the bag, with the groceries in it, um, and then the forces acting on it. Uh, we always have the force of gravity, right? And then I'm going to call this, because uh, I like the term, because it's more general. I could say we, I could say the force of my hand on the bag, but that makes a very long subscript. So I'm just going to say force applied, or I'm going to say F of A, A in this in this case. All right. So when I'm when I'm holding the bag, the applied force, I'm applying a force that's equal to the force of gravity, right? So um, that would mean that the net force is equal to zero. We are when in equilibrium, there's no net force. Um, by definition, F net is equal to zero. Now, what I've done is I've, um, if I expand this out, we, we have a couple of equations for working with these elevator type problems. And this, whether you know it or not, the grocery bag problem is an elevator type problem. Uh, F net in general is the, um, is the vector addition of these two forces, right? So it is the applied force plus, we're adding the vectors, vector addition we're adding, plus FG. But because of the way I've drawn FG, FG is acting in a negative direction. So let's not lose sight of that negative sign. I see it right there. Let's not use, lose sight of the fact that FG is in opposition to FA. So if F net is equal to zero, meaning there is no net force, there is no acceleration, it ain't moving. Or it's going at a constant velocity. Don't forget that part, that if something's not accelerating, it could be at rest or it could be moving at constant velocity. But in this problem, it ain't moving. Right? It's in equilibrium. So if F net is equal to zero, and this is the relationship between the applied force and the force of gravity, then I can say that F of A is equal to F of G. Can I not? Because these two actually have to be, F A has to be equal to F G in order to make F net equal to zero, right? That's simple algebra. Got it so far? So if you were to ask me what is the applied force, Without all that rigmarole, you probably just would tell me, well, if this arrow is the same size as that arrow, then FA must be equal to FG. Okay, no algebra required. Okay, but I'm just, we're going to need this kind of thinking in order to solve the challenge. The challenge is not when it's in equilibrium. The challenge is what happens if I accelerate the bag? What? So can it withstand that? Seven, seven meters per second squared, that's a lot of acceleration. That's getting close to 1G, right? 1G is 9.8 meters per second squared. Seven meters per second squared. He's getting close to, he's pulling 1G on the back. It's hard to take me seriously when I'm wearing a wig. Isn't it? <laughs> okay, so. So I'm here on paper finishing up the grocery bag problem because the, uh, video cut off uh, right after we talked about um, the grocery bag problem um, when there is no acceleration, when is just an equilibrium situation, when you just have the when you just have the weight of the groceries in the bag um, pulling against your hand, which is 
holding up the bag F applied. But that's not the case when the bag is accelerating at 7 meters per second squared. When it's accelerating 7 meters per second squared, that means that we actually have a net force that is the result of the mass and the acceleration of the bag being pulled up. Which in this case is equal to about 105 newtons. The trick to solving this problem or answering the question, will the bag rip, is realizing that this F max is F applied. That F applied cannot exceed 230 newtons. Well, let's find out if this is the case. F net is equal to F applied plus a negative F of G. And we know what F of F net is. We need to find out what F of G is. That is simply the mass of the groceries times the acceleration of gravity which is equal to 15 kilograms times 9.8, which is equal to 147 newtons. Okay, so if we rearrange this equation now for F applied, and that's simply going to be our F net plus F of G we find that 105 plus 147 is going to be equal to 252 newtons and that is in excess of our 230. So the bag is, is going to rip. That's the answer to this problem.